Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back once again to the Inside Analysis Big Data Ecosystem Market. We're checking out all the different technologies in the big data ecosystem, and of course that would be just about everything these days that uh, is, is hot or exciting, at least a lot of fun stuff going on out there. And today we're going to be hearing from Brian Rowe of Perceivant. So Brian, let us know what's going on with you guys. Yeah, thank you. I'm just going to do a quick demo of our latest release and uh, quickly show you how we can help people explore their data and uh, quickly turn that into dashboards and then also use that uh, for their data scientists all, all in our single uh, hosted platform in the cloud. So when you log into our system the first time, it would probably not have any dashboards uh, on your first dashboard that you would land on, but I have uh, added a couple of things here just so that you can see what they might look like. And there's various types of uh, dashboard elements that you could apply. Um, the system basically starts in the query mode, and we try to make it so users don't have to write SQL anymore and try to match what would be a pivot table interface in Excel uh, that might be uh, more normal for them to work in. And you can simply drag and drop uh, data elements uh, that you're interested in. We provide a data dictionary, and so had this uh, field had a description, uh, it would show here. It tells you what type it is, and you can change the name of the field to make it easier for uh, business users in IT to use the same fields. And so, I might simply drop age over here, and uh, it's going to quickly run through whatever data set I have. The key here is that we can query terabytes of data in the speed that you just saw. So essentially the user is getting to work in real time uh, with their data. And I'm just going to run a couple of these queries. So now I've kind of bucketed this data very quickly, and I'm just going to do paid status. I could do gender, um, something else like that, but I'm just going to do paid status by age bucket. And then I can come over here and maybe do a, a stacked graph. And so I can come in here to terabytes of data and essentially work through the visualization and querying of these data sets to find out that, well, the majority of my 20 to 25 year olds are paid, uh, but that's also my largest group of unpaid. And I can quickly uh, graph that. I can graph all dates. So I can do rolling dates, or I could just do top X. And I can essentially name this uh, anything I wanted. I'm just going to do paid by age, just for this demo. Hit save and say OK. Now, if I go back, my dashboard, and I go to add paid by age. And so I'm able to add things very quickly without programming uh, any anything else. I didn't have to call IT. Uh, I, my data was loaded into the perceiving platform, and now I can make these uh, dashboards and graphs at will. I can also uh, share these with people on my team. I could save them as different graphics, but if I was, uh, let's say, a business user that wanted to share this with my boss, I could now share it uh, with them if they have secure access to the data. I can also zoom in on my dashboard, which makes sense. But more importantly, I can drill down. And so I could drill back down to this uh, chart with the raw data that we saw before, and then I could drill down into uh, maybe my unpaid, okay, and I can look at the actual raw data, which, uh, let's see, you know, we don't, we, this is all contrived, so we're not showing you uh, people's names here, but um, now I can get the actual values. I could export this list. Um, I could save it to my desktop and maybe set up a call campaign to reach these people but I'm essentially able to find these people that I wanted to, download it to my desktop, and do something with it uh, without having to call back to IT. If I had saved this data in some way that I was a data scientist and wanted to use it in R and I filtered it, 
down now to the right number of rows. If I had terabytes of data and I brought it down to gigabytes of data and I wanted to pull this into RStudio, I'm switching over here to our RStudio interface where I'm already logged in. And I can, I don't know how this will show it in WebEx, but we have some functions that are basically standard R functions that let you uh, load what drill downs, what we call those uh, uh, those data sets, and you can now see which ones I've saved already, and then you can load them to your R instance. And so very quickly, your data scientist can pull the data from the data warehouse that we have into their R environment and essentially create charts like the one you see um, on the right. And there's a few other uh, functions that we provide, but it provides a, a seamless way for them to explore the data up front and then pull it back into an environment where they would do their data science work. The okay, so that's, just real quick, that's being hosted in Amazon Web Services. Is that, is that what I saw? So it's basically it's it's hosted in the cloud, or um, I mean, do you guys host as well, or how does that work? We have two hosting mechanisms. Uh, we will host in a HIPAA compliant environment at Amazon, a non HIPAA compliant environment at Amazon. Uh, we also have a provider that we can set up a direct VPN connection, or uh, we can go on prem for people who want to install on premises now. It takes about two days for us to set the environment up on premises now once the hardware has been ordered. Wow, cool. Um, and then I think that's probably uh, the majority of what I want to show for the demo, other than uh, maybe that there is a way, if you can see the hover, there's a way to have comments about graphs and charts. So, so we've started to add in the ability to socialize uh, the output and the graphs. And so if, if you see, for in this case, paid by age, um, why are there so many people who haven't paid and you want to make a comment about that? You, you can go ahead and, and do that now. But, but most everything that you're seeing here can all be done um, via the web browser uh, without engaging uh, your IT staff. So are you talking to business people mostly, or what's the combination of your prospects and clients, the people who actually buy and, and test it out? Is it largely the business, or do you get a lot of IT folks who are just looking to offload stuff, or how does that work? Typically, business users and uh, data scientists. And so uh, data scientists aren't necessarily uh, the buyer, but, but they have a certain amount of pain in terms of setting up these environments, getting them hosted, getting access to data. Um, and then uh, the, the business is certainly uh, interested in the value, and their IT teams are, are typically – um, already under enough, you know, time pressures, et cetera. And so our engagements typically start with those two, the business user and uh, the data scientist. Okay, cool. Well, this has been good stuff, man. Good for you. We've been talking to Brian Rowe of Perceivant, and check him out online. It's a P-E-R-C-E-I-V-A-N-T dot com, right? Correct. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you, and uh, we'll catch up to you next time, folks. Take care. This has been another episode in the big data ecosystem market at InsideAnalysis.com. Thanks, folks.